All right, we're doing this. We're doing it. It's happening. We're here. It is 2020. It is a new year and we are kicking off this YouTube channel. It is about time. It's the year of tutorial videos and how to's and all the other stuff I've been procrastinating on for a very, very long time. So tell your friends, we're gonna do this. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be legit, which probably means I'm gonna screw up what I'm gonna say and mess up a lot. So get ready for it. I can't think of what else to say, so cue the intro video. Hey guys, my name is Ryan Sims. Welcome to the channel. We're gonna talk about photography. We're gonna talk about lighting, behind the scenes, Photoshop, all that good stuff. So stay tuned. It's probably gonna be a bumpy ride. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is my very first episode of whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the first video. Oh gosh. So I don't know about you, but I know that when I'm scrolling through Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or whatever streaming app that you're streaming on at the time, uh, I always look at all of the different images that I'm scrolling through and uh, I'll see some really cool promo art and I'll say to myself, man, that's really, really cool. Uh, I bet we could do some YouTube videos on how they did that and we could start recreating those and uh, taking you through the process of the lighting and the Photoshop and all of that stuff. So that's basically what I think we're gonna do uh, for this first video. So from in camera to lighting to Photoshop, I am gonna show you how we recreate the Netflix movie poster for El Camino. All right, so if we look at this image that we've got of El Camino, we have got a main light off here to the right side kind of lighting up the broad side of the face. We got our rim light over here, kind of giving us a nice rim light. Uh, I'm using some Paul Buff uh, Einstein E640 flash units. Great lights, affordable lights, good for studio work. Here I'm using a 35 inch softbox with white diffusion fabric. Uh, I've just got this one with a regular reflector on there right now. Uh, to achieve the look that we're going for, I think this is pretty simple setup, just two light setup. That's all we need for this. We got my camera over here. Uh, using a Canon 5D Mark III. Got my 70 to 200 millimeter lens on. I think I'm at 135 millimeters right now. Camera settings are at F11, 200. I want it to be gritty, I want it to be dark. Uh, so when we bring it into Photoshop, that's really going to uh, make those effects and that grit pop. That's what we want. El Camino, it's gritty. So, <laughs> And uh, I've got this nice little Cyber Commander that's uh, syncing up the lights. They've got transmitters on the lights, and so that's syncing the lights. When it flashes, it's gonna trigger the lights to flash. And I got my little remote control for the Canon so we can take some fun pictures. So, let's give it a shot. Let's see what we can do. Gotta get the, the eyebrows down. Get this Aaron Paul look going on. All right, let's take it into Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop. I don't know if this is true or not. I, people have told me I look a little bit like Aaron Paul. Maybe that's kind of one of the reasons why I chose this today. Um, you're probably watching this video and be like, no, nah, I don't see it. I don't see it at all. I've been told that on <laughs> numerous occasions and so it's neither here nor there. It's not a relevant detail. Anyway, um, this is the movie poster. Uh, or the Netflix poster, whatever you want to call it, that we're going to be recreating. So there's one of two ways you can do it. You can do it your own way, or you can just straight up recreate the poster like verbatim. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I, I like to open up Adobe Bridge. This is how I like to look at all my images that I've taken. Um, and I've actually gone through here and selected like my favorites. I think this one, even though it's a little off center, uh, I'm going to use it. And so I'm going to drag and drop this one into Photoshop. So I'm going to tell you exactly what we need to do to recreate this image. Uh, normally what I like to do is I like to go into the sharpen area right here and I like to sharpen it. Now normally I've already done it, you see. Uh, normally it's around like 20 or 30. 
uh, but I like to bump it up to like 75, 90, somewhere in that area. It just kind of gives a nice sharpness to it. I'm actually gonna play with the exposure just a tiny bit. I might bring it down just a tad bit. I'm gonna bump the clarity up, make it a little grittier, the default, that's after. Uh, I might leave it like that for right now and then hit open image. Normally I don't play with it. Uh, until later. If you're wanting to pretty much recreate this image verbatim, what you could do is go into your file here and hit Control A to select all, Control C to copy, and go over to your document, Control V to paste. Now I know this is super small, but for the sake of what we're doing, we're gonna make it a little bit larger. In the end, this doesn't matter, this is just our source image that we're using. I'm going to duplicate this layer. You can right click and hit duplicate or you can on the layer that you've uh, that you're selected on you can hit control J. I'm just going to drag it up and lower the opacity so I can kind of see framing wise what I need to do to get this image quite right. I'm just going to hit OK for right now. I think that's probably fine and then go back up to 100% opacity. Now, it looks like I got cut off a little bit right here. With this layer selected, I could go over to mask, click that button, and see we got a little white mask now, so anything that we paint with black, will it'll hide. So I'm gonna hit my hotkey B for brush. That's gonna bring up our brush tool over here. Um, make sure opacity and flow right 100%. And uh, on your keyboard, if you hit the brackets, the left and right bracket in between P and enter button. Uh, you can increase the size, decrease the size, or you can right click and play with the size right there. Um, so I'm just gonna hit this right bracket, make it a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna paint this edge off just a little bit like that. And this will all make a little bit better sense here in just a moment because we're gonna have this black background and yeah, all that good stuff. A couple of ways I could do this. I mean, obviously it's either he was shot on a black background or maybe they photoshopped the black, black background in. Either way, um, we're gonna make this background black. So there's a couple of ways we could do it. Um, probably the most efficient way is to use the pen tool, but I think I might have a quicker slash better way maybe to do this. I think I am going to go into the channels panel uh, I'm going to go to my red layer. I am going to right click, hit duplicate channel to duplicate that red channel. And with, see, I'm going to turn all of these off and just leave the red on for a second. And what this is going to do, if I go over to my dodge and burn tool over here, right now we're on the dodge tool, we're going to go to the burn tool. You just hold that down, this menu will come up. Or I think the, the hotkey for that is O. So if you hold Shift and O down, it'll toggle between the different tools. I'm gonna to go to my Burn tool, go over to Shadows, and increase the exposure to 30%. And what I'm gonna do on this red copy here is start painting over the black background. Uh, and a quick way I could do this, um, let's see, I'm gonna press my L key and just loosely get the majority of the gray on this side. And with my brush tool, just paint all that out. I'm gonna try to make this super quick and super easy for you. And just barely do it on that side. Uh, and the reason why is because that's just gonna take out a chunk of the work. And with my, uh, if I hit the hotkey O to bring up our burn tool, um, on the shadows uh, layer, uh, our range is at shadows, exposure 30%. It's gonna kind of start painting over this edge a little bit. And as you notice, it, all this is doing is just getting the shadows. It's not getting the highlights of my face or anything like that. Um, so you're just kind of lightly brushing over these areas here. Luckily, because this is a closer up shot, uh, there's not much that we have to do, so we can kind of make quick work of it, hopefully. And so we kind of got a rough idea of what that's gonna look like. We're going to swap over to our Dodge tool, go to Highlights, 
and increase it to 30%. And again, I'm gonna hit my L key to bring up the, uh, my L hot key to bring up this lasso. Kind of cover the majority of the work here on my face. Oops. And what I'm gonna do is with a white brush, just paint this in. And uh, hit Control D to deselect. All right, I'm gonna hit O, hotkey O, to bring up our dodge tool again. Now that we're range uh, is on highlights and exposure's at 30%. I'm gonna zoom in, and we're gonna just lightly paint over the highlights. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go over to this red copy, hold down Control, and click this little white box, white and black box over here by red copy. And what that's gonna do uh, is kind of select everything. Uh, so yeah, once you hold control, click this box over here, you're gonna go back over to layers, and we're gonna select the mask over here, and we're going to just um, paint what's on the outside. Now currently it's just got me selected, so you can invert that by holding down control shift I, I for invert, easy to remember. And just make sure you've got your mask, uh, your mask selected, and with a black brush, you can paint out the outside. I'm gonna hit Control Shift N and just put, uh, name it black background, BG for short, hit OK. Uh, I'm just going to select this black color here and uh, our hotkey for the fill tool is G. So I'm gonna hit G and click inside that layer. Now we have a black layer. So what I'm gonna do for retouching, um, as I'm going to uh, hit Control Shift Alt E, all those buttons together, Control Shift Alt E to stamp what I've got because I want this to be one layer. Um, if we were working a little bit more non destructively, probably wouldn't do that, but I am for the sake of this video. Uh, I'm just going to put it Ryan Merge because we just merged all these images together. And what I'm gonna do now is uh, I actually have an action that I'm gonna run. Uh, and I can probably explain this action in, in another video, uh, but it's uh, an action I got from um, Alias EDU, a really good uh, digital artist masterclass uh, by an amazing photographer uh, named Antti Karpinen. Uh, he's from Finland. And so, um, yeah, I've got this action from here, but I'll include a link in the post uh, on, on how you can do this. Uh, the best one that I know how, how to do um, is from F Stoppers. Uh, they explain high frequency separation really, really well. Um, so I may do a video on that, but uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna tell you that I am about to perform some uh, high frequency separation to do some retouching. And basically what that's doing is it's separating this image into two layers. One is primarily focusing on the tones and the other one is focusing on the detail like skin texture and things like that of the image. And I can use a black and white layer to kind of see all the imperfections of my face. And so I am going to go into my texture layer and start editing out some of my blemishes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, hit the S hotkey to bring up this clone stamp tool. Um, and with the hardness at 100% and the size really small, uh, I'm going to start working on my image. So on that texture layer, I want to hold down the Alt key and sample from certain areas of texture and start painting over them. Another thing that I could do as well is smooth out the tones. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my color edit layer or the, uh, you could call it colors, you could call it tones. And uh, with my lasso tool, I'm just going to select certain areas that I want to transition well. Get to say this whole area right here. And I've got my feather set to 10, uh, 10 pixels and I could blur this uh, a certain amount. I think it's already set to 10, so I'm just gonna keep it at 10. Uh, and if you want, you could always just use a hotkey for that, which is Alt Control F. Hey, let's go up here uh, to our little adjustments panel and there's a little black and white tab. I'm gonna hit that, there we go. And if you hold the Alt key down and select a certain layer, it'll deselect all the layers except for that one. And so I'm gonna do that just to kind of refer back to this image 
and see some of the things I liked about this image. Uh, it's got some nice contrast and grit to it. And so I'm going to add a, a levels layer. Kind of play around with these levels just a little bit. Maybe crank up the whites slightly. Bring down the mid-tones just a little bit like that so we get a little bit more strong highlight. Let's go to black and white and see how that, how that looks. I don't want it to be too harsh. And I may even create the curves layer. I'm just going to bring this down slightly. I'm going to create a new layer. Control Shift N for a new layer. And let's see, I'm going to name it uh, DB for Dodge and Burn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Mode, go to Overlay, Fill with Overlay Neutral Gray uh, Color. It's going to be a 50% gray color. Check that, hit OK. And what I'm going to do is with my Dodge and, Bull, uh, Dodge and Burn tool, hit O. Let's bring up the Burn tool. Uh, I'm going to go back to Midtones, go back to like 3%. And I'll probably go ahead and change the same thing for Dodge as well. That way, I'll just have them both where I want them. All right, and with that Dodge tool selected, I'm just going to kind of go up and around and start painting over the shadows and the midtones. Kind of making the uh, shadows pop a little bit, highlights a little bit stronger. This is basically just like painting over the image a little bit. And then I'm going to hit uh, hit Shift and O to swap over to my uh, Dodge tool and just kind of lightly paint over the highlights now. And if we hold the Alt key down and click on our Dodge and Burn layer, you can kind of see uh, what I've been doing. Um, so if I turn all the layers back on and just do like a little before, after, you can kind of see the difference a little bit. All right, so let's refer back to that image. It almost looks like that black and white has a little bit of a warmth to it, almost like a barely there sepia. Um, so what I might do is I might go over like the color balance and just maybe barely play with the red tones just a tiny bit. And another thing I might do as well is right underneath this black and white layer, uh, if I click on curves and go uh, to select color, I'm gonna play around with some of these tones as well to kind of give it a little bit more grit. I like kind of play with the red tones, bring them down a little bit. It uh, looks like he's got some scars on his face. One, two, three, so yeah, we'll just add in some random scars. Um, so for the scars, I've actually got a uh, source image. I'm gonna borrow somebody's, <laughs> somebody's face for this. Um, let's see, I'm going to go over to my temporary folder and this pretty little girl who has scars on her face. We're going to use, use her face for this. And, and apparently these are all uh, free source images. Uh, if you go to pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com or pixabay.com, you can get uh, all kinds of free images. So you can search in the search engine, whatever you want to find. Hopefully they have it. Um, you know, if I'm doing a simple composite like this, uh, sometimes I'll do, I'll do that. Uh, it's always nice to shoot your own um, stock images, uh, but for the sake of this tutorial, we are just going to keep it simple. So with my uh, brush, I hit B, uh, hotkey B to bring up our brush, uh, and then I can hit Q, which is going to bring a uh, click on this little uh, mask icon down here. So you want it kind of pushed in like that, you know, that's... When it's not selected, that's when it is selected. So if it's not selected, you hit Q, hotkey to select it. Um, and opacity 100%, flow 100%, it's gonna paint over these scars. Hit Q again. Uh, now it's got everything out here selected. I want just this to be selected. So I'm gonna hit Control Shift I, Control C to copy. And in my layer here, I'm going to hit Control V to paste. I'll just label that scar one. All right. Actually, I'm going to drag it below our uh, selective color. Actually, I'm going to drag it below all of this because the levels, the selective color, the black and white color balance, all of that will be applied to it if it's under those 
layers, and that's what we want. Um, so I'm gonna hit Control T to kind of grab it and move it around. Probably gonna use it right here on the nose. And just uh, grab this corner here, drag it in like that. Yeah, it looks like a nice little nose scar there. Uh, and there's a couple of ways I can do this. Uh, probably one way I'm gonna do it is with that scar layer selected, hit the mask tool. And uh, with my black brush selected, kind of paint over the edges just barely. You can always play with the flow or opacity. I'm gonna bring it down to like maybe 5%. And I'm gonna zoom in really close here and just kind of brush out these little details here that we don't really need. And what I can do as well is with that scar uh, layer selected, I can hit levels and then click this little button right here to clip it to the scars layer and play around with the exposure or the levels of it and make it look a little bit more like it belongs there. Uh, so let's go back to our source image, kind of see what we got going on here. All right, so I noticed there's a nice little fade in the background here. Uh, a couple of different ways we could do that. Um, I'll probably just go all the way up to the top here, create a gradient. Um, so if you go to layer, new fill layer, gradient, gradient fill, okay. And uh, so right now we've got uh, a gradient fill from black, just to transparent. And right now it's going from the bottom up. We want it to go from the right to the left. So we're actually gonna take the angle. We can just move it around like that. And I'm just gonna move it over to about negative 180. So now you see it's from right to left. And I can actually double click in here. And I can play around with the white layer here and drag it over some. And just hit okay and okay again. I mean, we're looking pretty close. I think really the only thing we need to do at this point is just add these little red lines in. <laughs> Super easy, barely any inconvenience. <laughs> what we're gonna do is hit a Control Shift N and we're gonna just name this layer red lines. Hit the M hotkey, which brings up our little marquee tool. And uh, I could do this myself, but I'm actually gonna use this reference image. So with that marquee tool selected, I'm just gonna kind of go like this right here. And with the I hotkey, select that color. And then the G hotkey to fill it. I'm gonna fill it like that. Control D to deselect, decrease the opacity so I can see what's going on. Hit M hotkey to bring up that marquee tool again. I'm gonna select right here, here we go. Hit my mask tool over in the bottom right uh, and then hit control I to invert that mask. There we go. That way it just leaves the red and leaves the black behind. And then hit my M key again. And I'm gonna go from this angle this time. Drag it all the way up. And with my black brush selected, Make sure that you're at 100% of everything. Just gonna paint that part out, just like that. Control D to deselect. So if we hide everything, hold Alt, press this layer here, you can see we've got just this red bar. Uh, so yeah, so basically what I did, if you hold the Alt key and select this layer, well, if it'll let me, you can see that literally everything is white. And when everything is white, that just means that everything is revealed in this layer mask. Um, and everything that's black is hidden. So really all we have is just one, if I deselect that and just show you what we got, we just have one red bar here. It's just one red bar, but those two strips are where we decided to hide the red bar. So that's all that's being revealed. So if I reveal all the layers again, you can see we got that. And then I'm just gonna hit Control J to copy it. And then I can actually take it and slide, if you hold the Shift key down, you can slide it straight across and not like up and down and all that stuff. Hold shift and drag it across like that. 
And the only other thing that I know, besides the font, of course, you can go to like defonts.com and download fonts that look like that, even with the distress and grunge and all that good stuff. Um, and there's other ways we could do that. Um, if you're interested in that, I can show you. Um, but we want to make sure that this red bar is behind his face. And there's a quick way that we can do that since we've already masked out the face. So let's bring everything back up. If we go back down to my Ryan layer, we want to hold control down and click the layer mask. And that's where we get all of our little dancing ants and everything. And with that selected and with the layer mask selected of the red lines, we're going to paint that out just like that. I think instead of red being like that, we're going to change the blending mode to something else. Screen, perhaps. I might go back up to 100% because I just realized it was not at 100%. We've got these two red lines. They're both set to 100% at screen blending mode. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more that we could do. But uh, yeah, that is how we recreate the Breaking Bad Netflix movie poster, uh, El Camino. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to hit the notification button so you can stay up to date on all of my latest videos. Be sure to leave a comment on what you'd like to see me work on next. Hope to see you guys next time, and again, thanks for watching. Be sure to have a comment. Blah, 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 blah. Take two. Hi there. My name is Ryan Sims. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the channel. Goodbye. What's up, guys? This is Ryan Sims. Welcome to the channel. Blah, 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 blah. This is my lighting. I'm at Carlo's studio. This is a nice desk. This is a leather jacket. And we're good. <laughs>